You know, it's easy to stick with what's comfortable, reading books that affirm what we already believe in and avoiding the voices that we disagree with. But limiting ourselves in this way stunts both our personal and our spiritual growth. Every now and again, someone warns me about a book I'm reading. They'll say, Jeremy, that author is woke, or they support the wrong political party. Sometimes it's, the author endorsed this bad book, or they intend this questionable pastor's church. The underlying message is clear. If someone holds to an unapproved view within a certain tribe, they're canceled. Their books aren't worth reading, and if you do read them or have anything praiseworthy to say, it's seen as endorsing their entire ministry. They have my full endorsement. I don't subscribe to that way of thinking. Instead, I believe that I can benefit and learn from both unbelievers as well as my brothers and sisters who I have strong disagreements with. So today I want to share why I read books from authors I disagree with and why I think that you should too. The first thing that I want to point out is just because someone is wrong in one area doesn't mean that they lack wisdom or expertise in another area. See, every group, whether it's a theological tribe, a tradition, or denomination, has blind spots. But they also have strengths that we can learn from. No group gets everything right, including my own. He's right. I'm not perfect. As an example, I'm not a Pentecostal or a Baptist. That said, I believe that Baptists generally excel in evangelism as well as personal holiness, and Pentecostals often cultivate vibrant prayer lives and take spiritual warfare seriously. While I have strong critiques of both groups' theology, I also recognize that they have lay people as well as teachers who do certain aspects of the Christian life better than I do. I can sit at their feet and learn from them without affirming everything that they believe or even the things that they're most known for. It would be foolish to reject everything they offer just because I believe they get some things wrong. I have blind spots too, and my own tradition isn't perfect. Reading books from authors I have disagreements with helps me to grow through their strengths in areas where I am weak or ignorant. The second point is that if you have the truth, then different perspectives shouldn't be a threat. Reading widely across time, geography, and theological traditions challenge us to ensure we're holding to the truth, not just defending inherited opinions without question. See, the danger of only reading authors you agree with is that you can end up trapped in a bubble without even realizing it. A bubble boy? Yes, a bubble boy! This bubble limits your ability to see where your understanding might be incomplete or even wrong. Another benefit is that engaging with other perspectives, especially those you disagree with, sharpens your own beliefs. See, hearing contrary ideas forces you to think critically. Why do I believe what I believe? Why do I think their perspective is wrong and mine is right? The end result is that it either strengthens your own convictions or it becomes an opportunity to adjust your beliefs according to the truth. If we isolate ourselves from these outside ideas, we miss out on these opportunities to grow. The final point is that reading authors you disagree with allows you to grow your discernment muscles. See, learning to discern between good and bad ideas is a skill. And in order to grow in that skill, it needs to be developed through real life practice. It's like growing from a baby to an adult. Babies need food that's been mashed up for them because they don't have teeth to chew. In the same way, brand new Christians lack knowledge and discernment, and it's more important for their reading list to be cultivated by the good. But that's not where they're supposed to stay. If their mom mashed up all their food for them as an adult so that they didn't have to chew themselves, you'd recognize that as pathetic and immature. At that stage, they should be able to chew themselves, spitting out the bones, and eating the meat. But some people approach books like the baby who needs their food mashed for them. They believe that everything must be pristine without any errors or problematic ideas or else it's not going in. But in reality, no author gets everything right. Learning to separate the good from the bad is an essential skill, not only for your spiritual life, but for all of life. This prepares you to engage with the world in real life. See, when we read only what aligns with our beliefs, we don't get to practice filtering through ideas critically. If we can learn to hold on to what is good and reject what is not, we'll be far more prepared to engage with different worldviews in a thoughtful and meaningful way. The practice of reading books from authors you disagree with not only builds discernment, but also fosters a mindset of lifelong learning. If you only read what confirms your belief, your growth is going to stop. 
But when you expose yourself to ideas from different worldviews or theological traditions, you help foster a humble and a teachable spirit and will come out stronger than just reading in a bubble. Reading widely isn't about agreeing with everything. It's about seeking the truth wherever it can be found and letting that truth shape us. The Proverbs teach us that iron sharpens iron, and sometimes that sharpening comes from unexpected places. So next time you see an interesting book or from someone with expertise, from an author that you disagree with, approach it with a humble and teachable spirit, being willing to learn from unexpected places. Do read it critically with discernment, but enjoy the process of wrestling with different perspectives. Chew the meat, spit out the bones, and keep on learning. Now we've talked a lot in this video about the importance of reading widely. Before you embark on that journey, consider starting with Andrew Nasali's How to Read a Book, Advice for Christian Readers. He also encourages broad reading, but will teach you how to get the most out of what you read. You can pick up the book today on Amazon. The link is going to be in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.